March is here. Let's see what are the new releases that I'm gonna be reading this month and also what new series I'm starting and the ones that I'm continuing. Since last month, I'm starting to break down my TBRs into three buckets. The first one is new releases because I really want to get into those so that I can be useful for you. Second bucket, new series that are not as new but I really want to read. And the third one, series that I'm continuing. So second or third books that I really want to read and you know just leaving some space so that I can also get to them. But this month I'm planning around eight books it will be a blend between young adult and adult fantasy that's why i think the eight mark it's good because adult fantasy tend to be a little bit more chunky and also a little bit more complex to read for the first bucket of new releases the first one is the war of two queens by jennifer l armentrout and <laughs> is this one of the most exciting books for me this year yes it is is book four in the from blood and ash series and it will continue the events of book three which was frantic let me know down below if you will be interested in a recap and the story ended with such a cliffhanger and i cannot wait then we have a gallant by b.e schwab also one of the most exciting releases for me i tend to really like v.e schwab writing style i think it's very 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 unique as it's her style we will be having this story that is slightly spooky and we will be following our main girl as she has been raised all of her life in this school for girls and the only thing that links her to her family is this diary that her mom has talking about their family manor called Galland. It seems that one summer she gets an invitation to go to Galland and upon arriving she discovers that things are kind of weird, meaning she sees ghosts, all of that kind of vibe and she mysteriously one day discovers kind of this wall that if you pass it you get into kind of another dimension. You get again into Galan, but it's a different Galan, one where the ghouls are real. For the early reviews that we are seeing, it seems that the story is mainly this, like they're not much a twist and turns farther down the line, but I think that's all right. The third one, it's a release from February and it's The Girl Who Fall Beneath the Sea, a nation's pious story, which honestly seems so down my alley. And this will follow our main girl that lives in this land, in this island, where the people, it's very, very tormented by the sea. And the people of this island have decided that the god of the sea is mad with them. And so, as a result, what they are doing is each year just sacrifice one of the girls of the village and, you know, sacrifices to the sea in the hopes of this bride being perfect for the sea god and the sea god to forgive them. This story will kick off as the most beautiful girl. It's not our girl, but it's in fact kind of the love interest of her brother. Reason why she decides to sacrifice herself and go to the sea. However, upon reaching into the depths of the sea, she will discover that the sea god is asleep and so she will start this quest of waking up the sea god. However, she has very limited time because a human can only live for so far in the underwater. So clock it's ticking the quest is about to be unfolded this is supposed to be very plot driven whimsical and last but not least in this bucket we have the demon tide which is book four from the black witch chronicles which i know they're not really well known i think they're kind of like a hidden gem within the fantasy romance kind of side book three ended in a way that i was like Mm -hmm. I want the book for like now. It kind of felt that book three was just created for us to kind of suffer. Again, let me know if you'd like to have a recap also for the Black Witch series. But for all of you that are new to the series, we will be following Elodin. She is the granddaughter of the Black Witch, which was the most powerful mage of all times. She led a revolution, a war within the different races and subjugated them all resulting in the situation in which now the majors are kind of like yeah we are the best ones and they are actually very mean 
very racist and they treat the other races, the werewolves, the wyverns, very, very, very badly. And we will keep off with our girl going to university, kind of like running away from a forced marriage with another mage. And upon arriving, she will discover that everything that she has been trained all of her life to believe, it's not true. It's the mages, in fact, the ones that are mean. So she will need, you know, to wake up, get away from those prejudices and she will maybe join a new movement. The male characters are fantastic. Oh my god. And before getting into the new series that I'm gonna start this month, click that subscription button if you want to see more book recommendations and reviews. And then getting into the new series that I'm starting. We'll start with The Black Prism and this comes from a moment in which I really want to read something similar to Brandon Sanderson, something similar to The Way of Kings, for example. And Brandon himself said that this book is a great pick. Also, friends of the channel recommend it to me. This is calling me. And this story will follow our main man, who is the Black Prism. And as such, he's kind of like the most powerful person in the empire. He is the emperor and he is in charge of keeping the peace at bay. The thing is that prisms never last, he knows when he's gonna die and he discovers that he has a child. So he will need to make a decision on how far he's willing to go for his son and you know it seems the story will unfold from there. I actually don't want to read any more and this synopsis since pre baked I don't want to have like these super high expectations. The second one is The Shadow of What Was Lost. No joke, this is a series that really I'm hoping to be a five star. It follows the story of this land where the Oguros, this kind of god-like people, were ruling and they were really, really, really mean, very evil, and they were wiped away. The thing is that these Oguros had people working for them called kind of like the gifted. These gifted people were able to get away from this revolution because they were really into kind of like, okay, 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 no, 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 we'll work with you, we'll work with you, yeah, let's kill all the Ogurus. And so now they are really, really, really kind of enslaved. And we will start with the main man who is one of these people with the gift. And one day we discover that he has not just the gift, but the full power of the Ogurus, triggering a set of events that put him on the flea but also you know it seems that the story will unfold throughout the whole land and mm, how does it sound amazing it sounds amazing so yes and last in this category we have CD of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. I am so obsessed with this author lately if the Divine CD series also makes it for me as well as the Founders Trilogy, I'm really thinking that he will become also one of my favorite authors and that is like serious business. So we have City of Stars, mainly kind of like a mystery thriller kind of vibe story where we will be following our main girl that it's kind of like the lead detective to solve this case. The interesting thing underneath is that this mystery will be solved in this city where previously these gods lived and this god created every fantastic thing in this city, you know? And they were wiped away again because they were really mean, they were very bad. It seems that weird things are happening again and when she gets into the city, she will start to discover that these gods are not as sad as they should be. Yes, like Robert, I'm counting on you. And for the last bucket, space for a series that I've already started and I want to continue. I just really want to continue the Zodiac Academy. I mean, in February I went to book one and book two. 100% a guilt pleasure kind of read, but I'm enjoying it so much that I really want to get to book three, hopefully book four as well. This story has a lot of things to make it fun, quick and interesting, you know. We will be following our two twins. Never knew that they were fae until one day they are kind of picked by this professor that tells them, hey, you're not just fae, you're actually kind of like the long lost heirs 
of the throne and so you need to come with us you need to go to the zodiac academy to hone your abilities and they discover that yes they are kind of the heirs but this king was really mad they being again in this world kind of it's messing up the whole structure of power that now it's distributed within the four main houses each of these houses are representing one element because this book is heavy on elemental magic but our twins are powerful they are able to manage the fourth of them making them the most powerful fae there are but of course very untrained how this story sounds it sounds cool and that was it for today i really hope you liked this video if you did give it a thumbs up let me know down below what are the books that you're gonna read this month i publish bookish content every tuesday and friday for you to enjoy so let's see each other in the next video Bye.